Welcome to Caldwell County Today. I'm Paige Counts, Public Information Officer for Caldwell County. Today I have with me Emily Gibbons with Facility Services and she's also a Library Board of Trustees member. Welcome Emily. Thank you. Emily's going to talk to us about holiday books and we hope we're getting this out to you in time for you to read a few of these. Yeah. Emily, That'd be great. tell us about your, you're an avid reader. Avid, yeah. This is my favorite pastime. Your favorite pastime. How do you keep up with what you read? Um, I use a, I use a website or an app called Goodreads. Um, it's basically social media for readers. So I keep a running list of what I'm reading, what I want to read. I rate it, and then I put it away. That way, I can always reference it if there's any questions about what I've read or haven't. So. How did you compile this list of holiday reads? Um, I try to save what I see until it's time to read for the holidays. So I started maybe in, in June or July looking for books to read and then I'd put them on my want to read list and then um, as it got closer to the holidays I started compiling them, whether that be on um, Hoopla or the digital library or physical books, which I'm not very good at that anymore, but you know, that comes with... Um, Bifocals. <laughs> so it does come with bifocals <laughs> and physical books, if you ever have to move, can get really bulky to move. Yeah, out. yeah. I carry every, I mean, this has like 200 books on it. That's pretty awesome. That is really awesome. Yeah. It really has changed the way we read today. Yeah, and I can, you know, I can change my font so that it's pretty big to suit my needs, which I think is something to keep in mind when you're thinking about library services, especially, that there is still something for you when you can't see. Um, because I have to make mine pretty big now. So, yeah. That's okay, as long as you can keep reading. I, exactly, exactly. All right, let's talk about this list. Okay. Um, the first book I thought I'd talk about is Eight Perfect Hours. I actually purchased this book, which means it was pretty important to me um, to read it. It's about, um, a, let's say first, I have an affinity for books that take place in Europe. So, okay. British. This is British. Um, they're stranded on a motorway and there's a blizzard, traffic is shut down, Noelle is stuck in her car, um, no car charger, no phone charger, so she can't call the people she loves and say, hey, I'm running late and I'm stuck on a motorway, might not be home till in the morning. She takes care of her elderly mom, um, who's of course looking for her to come home. Mm -hmm. So she ends up in a neighboring person's car, Sam, and they proceed to spend the next eight hours together in perfect harmony. Just everything clicks, um, great conversation, easy stillness, even like even when it's quiet, things are really easy for them. Um, and when Noel leaves the next morning, when they go their separate ways, they think that's it. They're never going to see each other again. And then over the course of the book, there's the there's a quote at the beginning of the book about the Chinese red thread. Do you mm -hmm. know about that? I'm not familiar with that. Like an, an invisible string that ties mm -hmm. us all together. Like if we look hard enough, there's something that's going to connect us. So Sam and Noel, over the period of the book, they just keep running into each other in these strange, peculiar ways. And it turns out they have all of these things, all of these people that are in common, but their paths have never crossed. Um, so I think it's a nice... Um, makes you think about how much of life is a plan, how much is left to fate, and how much is just good timing. Because for these people, it was about the time, and this was the right time for them to meet. And of course, there's some romance, but you know, she's got a boyfriend, he's got a girlfriend, there's all that stuff going on too. But um, the, at the heart of the story, it, it's really about finding the right timing. It doesn't necessarily take place at Christmas either. It's just a blizzard. It's just a blizzard. And yeah. So you can read in January. So if you can't get to this one before Christmas, pick it up in January Definitely. when it's cold and dreary and you need something to lift your spirits a little yes, bit. Yes, yes, it did a good job of that. I liked it a lot. Okay, what's next? Okay, so In a Holidays. That's by Christina Lauren. Um, that you can check out at the library or it's available on the digital library. I actually listened to this one, so it was a lot of fun. Um, it's a Groundhog Day type book where the girl makes a horrible romantic error and she ends up, she, she has a, a crush on this dude named Andrew, and she makes out with his brother. Oh. So it's a horrible mistake. She regrets it, and she says, I need the world to show me universe what will make me happy. And the next thing you know, she wakes up and relives the same day over. So she has to relive the day making the old mistakes at some points, then making new mistakes until she figures it all out. Um, so I, 
I like the idea of being able to correct some wrongs. So that was, I think that's what makes this one fun. And it is, it's a romance. It's also, um, takes place in a cabin where these two families come together every year for Christmas. Um, the cabin's in danger. They need to save the cabin. Um, just a, you know, it's a fun, there are lots of Christmas frivolity, if mm -hmm. I can call it that. You know, they do treasure hunts, or not treasure, what is it called? When scavenger hunts. Scaven okay. And, um, like, Christmas scavenger hunts, Christmas, just build a snowman contest, mm -hmm. different fun things. It should be a movie. I'd watch it, it. It sounds like a movie. Yeah, I would watch it. It totally um, sounds like it could be. As long as I can pick the day I live over and over <laughs> and over. <laughs> That's true. If I'm going to live a day over and over, I think I want to pick what day it is. Yeah, I think so, too. I think that'd be the good one. Not not the one she has to live over. Right. So, But she figures it all out. She gets it all together. It's great. Yeah. Now you just have an author's name on I your do. paper. I do an author. Sarah Morgan. I read everything she writes. She usually has a book in May if you want a nice summer read, but then she has a Christmas book. Um they take place in different wintry places. Mm -hmm. um, I, for the life of me, the books I have listed, The Christmas Escape, One More for Christmas, A Wedding in December, and The Christmas Sisters. I think The Christmas Sisters took place in Scotland. The Christmas Escape took place in Finland. Um, one of them's in Colorado. That might be A Wedding in December. But, you know, nice, cold places. And while these are romances, they deal more with family relationships um, and and you know, figuring out how to be together as a family at Christmas when you're not really together all year long or misunderstandings that have caused tension or whatever. Um, but then there is some romance in the, you know, the, in the kind of back seat. Mm -hmm. um, so I like those types of things. And they're good. If you want to read a Hallmark movie, these are good, warm fuzzies um, with a little bit more something. A little edge. A little bit more. Not a lot. I don't want to say, like, they're definitely PG, but not PG-13. I don't know. That sounds good. And as you're looking, as I was looking at these, I was thinking about how, you know, they all kind of follow a theme. I mean, you have that theme, but you also have family dynamics that we all deal with. Yeah, we do. Even the families you think, oh, my gosh, that they're, family, they're perfect. Oh, they're not. They're not. If you could just get behind closed doors with us. There's something going on in that <laughs> yeah. family. Yeah. And, and we all have things we have to deal with. Yeah, so. we do. And it's nice to read about somebody else's drama, not not, not your, your own. own. That's I think that's one of the reasons I read. It's an escape type thing. Whenever my mind is here, it's not there. Um, so. And I, that's what I love about reading is it's a total escape. Yeah. I don't have to concentrate on anything but these characters that I get to know. Yeah. And it's kind of sad sometimes when you close the book and you're like, oh. I that's know. one reason I like series of books, so yeah. I can live with the characters a little bit longer. I have one that's going to be a series on here. Okay. So that's exciting. Um, the next one is the holiday swap. How do you feel about twin stories, swapping twins? You know, I, I think a parent trap when I think about but swapping twin. I mean, that age Twin swaps. Twin swaps. Yeah. So this is, that's what this one is. Charlie, she's a chef with a reality baking show. She has a co-host she can't stand. And... There, she is trying to get her own show, so she really needs to stand out. But unfortunately, she hits her head pretty hard and can't taste or smell anything, which is, you know, shifts. detrimental to a chef. Yeah, exactly. So she's like, oh, well, I'll just call my twin and she'll fill in for me. And so they swap places because Cass, the other twin, is like, you know, I've got this boyfriend I'm trying to dump and he's not hearing me. So you break up with him for me and I'll come do this show for you. So. It, they think it's going to work out. And the thing is, is that while they look exactly alike, they're totally different people. Um, so in trying to maintain relationships as each other and then building new relationships as the other one, they kind of create a big mess. Um, but of course, you know, nice happy ending with big gestures. So it all works out, but it was fun to read the way they, you know, all their... Just troubles. It's not even troubles. What is it? It's like mischief. It is. The, it is like mischief. And I, I mean, you know, as a student in school, you always thought, now if I had a twin, please take this test for me. Please take this test <laughs> yes. for me. Yes. Yes. Or please, you know, you do this PE thing for me. Right. <laughs> Something like right. that. 
but I didn't have a twin, so yeah. I didn't have that luxury. Me either. I have a sister that looks very much like me, but they wouldn't know. Yeah, they would. Yeah, yeah. you could tell us apart. Well, my daddy can't, but some people can. <laughs> so, I have that trouble with my sister yeah. now. But yeah, me too. He calls us by, he goes through his sisters, gets to me. Yeah. Then he calls me my sister's name. It's great. Yeah. I, I was Alla Page growing up. My sister's Allison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I still answer to that. I do too. I do too. It's kind of, I mean, you it's know, kind it's of just the way it is. <laughs> That's I'm, exactly oh, right. I'm, uh, Emily. Uh, 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 it's okay. And so yeah, I'm sure these girls were called each other's names all the time. It didn't, I don't remember it saying in the book if they switched regularly or not, if this was something they did. But, I mean, I, I don't know if I'd take on a TV show for my twin. Like, you and I, me and my twin might be tight, but I don't, I don't know that I'd do a TV show for her. You, you know, that would be difficult. <laughs> that would be a difficult <laughs> thing. I mean, like, breaking up with her boyfriend... I mean, I think you could pull off enough. There's something in my soul. I think I could be like, no. Yeah. Get on out of here. Yeah, because you don't have any feelings for him. You don't have so any feelings. So it's easy enough. <laughs> Done. So, yeah, that, that one was a lot of fun. I read it really quickly. Um, it was, I read it on my Kindle. And um, it actually, that's the other book I, I've purchased. I said earlier to you, I've purchased mm -hmm. three books this year. And one was The Holiday Swap. One was Eight Perfect Hours. And the other one was Bridgerton. <laughs> so, um, typically, most any of these are available through the local library, which is really, you know, go to your library. It's a great resource, a great service, and I'm sure they can get their hands on any of these for you. They really can, and they have a lot of opportunities to reach out to libraries across the state. Right. And it's amazing what you can find there. And I found, too, that if they don't have it, if you ask for it, they usually get it pretty quick. So, yeah, I'm sure they would do that for us. So what else do you have for us? Um, okay, so my next one is kind of fun too. It's called Landline, and it's by Rainbow Rowell. So Rainbow Rowell writes a lot of young adult books, but this was an adult fiction book, and I'm particularly fond of it. Um, Georgie is a TV writer. She's super busy, really important, and she's working on a TV show. And it's coming down to deadlines right at Christmas. She has two small children, and she finds out that she's going to have to work through Christmas. Well, her husband, they have plans. They're supposed to go to his parents' house. And um, she's like, i got to stay here. And he's like, I'm gone. I'm going. It's Christmas. And so he does. He goes, he goes to his parents' house. Well, she is distraught. She can't believe he actually mm -hmm. did it. He thought she thought he'd stay. And so she goes to have a pity party at her mama's house and she stays there in her old room. And while she's digging in the closet, she finds an old rotary phone and she's like, I should call him, see if they've got there safely. And when she does, she calls him and it's him, but it's in the past and he's not her husband, he's her boyfriend. So through the course of the book, she kind of gets to re-know him, and while well, he's not, doesn't know what's going on, she can never get him in real time, only <laughs> on the landline. Um, she kind of gets to, you know, remember why she fell in love with him, what was important in the first place, and maybe works not everything. So I thought it was really a lovely little story. Um, I think here I've got it's a hug of a book, and that's exactly how I feel about it. And that's what we want at Christmas. Yeah. I mean, that's probably what we want, all, what I want all the time, but... Um, Really, at Christmas, you do want a book that just kind of hugs you and yeah. makes you feel good. And when you come away from reading, for me, when I come away from reading something like this, it's a nice reminder about what's important this time of year. We get so caught up in being busy and so caught up in just go, go, go. And sometimes it's just nice to be together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I really I enjoyed this book. And I also like that her last name was Georgie McCool. That's a great name. That is a great name. Yeah, it's a great name. Um, so, yeah, that one was really fun. Um, the next one hits a little too close to home, I think, for some <laughs> of us recently. Um, it's called Seven Days of Us, and it's by Francesca Hornack. Um, also British, stuck in a big manner. You've got a family that hasn't spent time together in years, and their daughter, Olivia. Um, she is coming home after treating an epidemic and she has to quarantine for seven days which means everybody in the house has to stay in the house for seven days um, they haven't been together in a long time so you know some interesting things start to happen there's lots of secrets and you can't really hide from them when you're all together that's true yeah. and I think 
if COVID has taught us anything, it's how to be together with our family, especially our immediate family. Exactly. So this one probably would really touch yeah. home. And now. I read it prior, you know, uh -huh. but I can definitely see its relevance now. I thought that will never happen. That will never happen. Look at us. Look at us. Almost two years later, yeah. Um, it, it is a lot of fun, though, because you've got a sister who is planning a wedding, and she's extremely extra. Um, you've got the dad, who's a former war co correspondent, and he constantly likes to talk about his glory days. Um, you've got this random guy that shows up on the door, and he knocks, and he's like, oh, hey, I think you might be my dad. Um, and then he's stuck in the house for seven days. And you just have a lot of dynamics. Because Olivia, too, she's adjusting. She hasn't had first world problems in a, in a while. So she's adjusting to all of this stuff that just doesn't seem important to her. Because, you know, well, it wasn't. Right. I mean, um, when you're worried about food and shelter and clean water. Yeah. Things like weddings don't seem important. They just don't. So yeah, it, this was I, I have that. This is a book about healing old family wounds and rediscovering what makes you a family. Um, this a, yeah, this one's a good one. A little bit more literary maybe than the mm -hmm. other ones, but um, and I do I think too this one could most holiday books are definitely going to tend towards the chick reader, mm -hmm. um, but this one could go. I, I definitely can see a gentleman enjoying this one too. So that's a good point. Seven Days of Us is a good book for anybody. Women. Anybody. Yeah, I think for anybody. Um, and then just because what kind of avid reader would I be if I didn't, I have to mention Harry Potter. Um, especially the illustrated books by Jim Kay, because you can really see the Christmas illustrations. But all, while they're not holiday reads, they have important Christmas scenes about friendship and family um, that I think helps, especially Ron and Harry's mm -hmm. relationship grow. Um, I think the illustrated versions are perfect for family reading time, you know, to sit down together. You don't even have to read the whole book. Maybe just read that scene. Um, they're pretty easy to find, especially by the illustrations. So um, just, you know, winter, snowy, Hogwarts is pretty at Christmas and it's magical because it's supposed to be um, and also I think there's a valuable lesson to learn with Harry who doesn't have a family and who Ron whose family takes him in that sometimes we make our own families um, it's not it might not be blood but it's certainly a, a, a real relationship and I think you see more and more of that at Christmas. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Um, and that wasn't the other, the Anna Holidays dealt with that too. It mm -hmm. was two families that, no relation, they get together for the for Christmas, um, which I think is nice. It is nice. And it is, it's nice to think about those people that may not have family, may not have family clothes. And another thing about Harry Potter, I have a young cousin who didn't like to read until she discovered Harry Potter. Yeah. And then, you know, it really turned her world around. For sure. It's reading. Yeah, I, I've heard that a lot of times. And I read these as an adult. Um, I, I, I actually, shockingly, watch the movies first. I had seen two movies before I picked up the books um, with a horror, but I just love them. Um, now I've read, I've, I'll read them any way I can. I've listened to them. I've read the illustrated copies. I've read the regular, like what they come out in. However you want to hand it to me is how, I mean, I do it every year. I pretty much read them. Every year. Every year, yeah. We also, I mean, a couple of Christmases ago, I said, I want to go to Harry Potter Wizarding World for Christmas. And it was phenomenal. Um, it, you know, just the joy, you're, it's really an immersive experience. And Hogwarts has like a lot, it was incredible, a lot show. And it's, you know, it's Florida, it's 80. But there's snow on there, just those roofs. So, I don't know. I just think Harry Potter is it's timeless. Um, I think we'll be talking about him for many years. And you said something interesting. You watched the movies first. I did. And for, for me, anyway, as a reader, I like to read the book first. Yes. Because it gives me the whole story where mm -hmm. a movie has to be cut down to, right. you know, two hours or two and a half hours or and a lot of times an hour and a half. Yeah. So I never want to watch the movie first. Well, and th it was kind of, it wasn't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I did why I did it that way. But I think because of that, 
I changed my, I changed how I view movies. Mm -hmm. A lot of, a lot of readers are like that. Oh, the movie was horrible or whatever. I can really appreciate both. I will watch those movies over and over and over, even with commercials. I own them. Um, <laughs> so, like, I, if I see it on, I have to watch it. I, it's just, I don't expect the movies to be as good as the books anymore. I've just changed how I, how I approach those true. things. Yeah. You have to realize that a movie has to be edited down to right. a time slot, and they can't bring out every single detail that a writer can include in a book. Right, and, and once I accepted that, it really changed how I, how I can movie watch um, because I'm, I'm not sitting there going, oh, they didn't do that in the book. Or, no, that's totally wrong. That wasn't even his name. I've had that happen <laughs> before, too. I thought, you know, I just right. let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah, because I can get really caught up in those little details. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Harry Potter. It's a lovely Christmas read. Um, and then next is another theme that I really like. Um, I call it a curm curmudgeon story, <laughs> but not necessarily, I guess. But there's been many through the years that have stood out um, where an older person is befriended by a younger person and the lessons they learn from each other. And The Christmas Bookshop by Jenny Colgan is one of those. Um, Carmen is out of a job. Her department store closes and she needs a job. And the last thing she wants to do is move in with her perfect sister in her perfect house with her perfect life um, and go to work in this dumpy bookshop just because she needs a job. But guess what she has to do? She, she has to do that. Yeah, she has to do that because it's her only option. Plus, her sister needs help. She's pregnant with her fourth kid. So, yeah, she needs a lot of help. Um, the bookshop owner, he's got to make some money pretty fast. He's an elderly man. Um, but he's try it's not just his bookshop. It's his home. And he's trying to save it because he can't pay his bills. So she's supposed to come in there and work her magic with her department store background and um, turn things around for him. So what you have is Carmen working on her, on her relationship with her perfect sister, who turns out to not be so perfect, of course. And then um, her relationship with the bookshop owner and how they really need each other about, I mean, they need each other, not, mm -hmm. you know, it's not him needing her or her need, they need, that they really build a relationship based on what, on their needs of each other. He And she turns things around. I mean, like, you know, she learns some life lessons. Um, she makes that bookshop super Christmassy, starts having some Christmas story times for kids, and Christmas, gets him involved in the community where he hadn't been before, mm -hmm. and they both step out of their comfort zones. I, it was a, you know, Scottish, really good, great accent if you're listening to it. <laughs> so, um, a lot of fun. But yeah, it, I think too for um, Carmen and Sophia, the sisters, their whole relationship was based on a bunch of presumptions. This idea that this one was mouthy and sassy and this one was perfect and pleasing um, when really they wanted to be like each other. So, you know, we make a lot of assumptions about people and they're not always right. That, that's very true because as we become adults and, and grown closer together, my sister and I, she was like, I was always jealous of this if, that you did. You're like, what? What? Really? really? Yeah. I mean, I was like, that's what you were jealous of? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny so, how we pick, how we do little things like that. There's also some great, this book, unlike the others, has children in it. Mm -hmm. um, so Carmen's kind of learning how to be an aunt and these kids are super spunky and that's kind of fun to watch too. Um, you know, because kids will say anything and do anything, so they add some humor to the book. Um, and there's some romance, too. Just that much. Just just a taste. Yeah, just a little bit. It's more about the family and the bookshop. And I think we can learn a lot from our elders. Oh, absolutely. So that that's a good reminder that, you know, maybe that person that you thought was a curmudgeon really is just lonely and needs a little help. Yeah. I mean, I, and, and in the book, too, he's got, he's got his own hang-ups just like the rest of us do insecurities that you know he doesn't want to address and mm -hmm. he she just slowly brings him out of his shell and it was really it was it was a good feel good type it sounds like a really good feel good book yeah and, and you know I can see my dad reading this one and enjoying it a certain type of guy um in, in I say that based on the fact that he has seven sisters, two daughters, always been surrounded <laughs> by women. So, you know, it's not that far out of his comfort zone. Um, but if you're looking for a shoot-em-up, this isn't it. 
no. Well, I'm, I don't think anything on your list is a shoot 'em up. <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm sorry. But I don't, well, you don't want a lot of shoot 'em up at Christmas. Now, I did have a friend one time that I asked her to recommend a Christmas book to me, and she recommended Nos for Autu. Do you know what that's about? It's like a vampire eating children. <laughs> but he has a wreath on his car. I was like, mm, that's not for me. No, that, that's not for me. As I tell the guys at Halloween, I really don't do scary. My scariest movie is like Casper, the Friendly Ghost. Yeah, I watched mm -hmm. A Quiet Place, and I'm just not your girl. I'm not your girl for that. Um, I think I screamed as much as they did in the movie. And they weren't supposed to. It was supposed to be quiet. <laughs> um, we have to talk about Debbie McComber here because she uh, isn't she like the self-proclaimed Queen of Christmas, or I don't know. I've read I've read all of her Christmas books. I read them every year. Um, Read it this year, because next year it'll be a movie. It'll be a Hallmark movie. It, it will be a Hallmark movie. Um, her newest one is called Dear Santa, and it's pretty sweet. Um, Lindy has broken up. Her boyfriend has cheated on her with her best friend, so she's pretty raw. And um, she goes home for Christmas, and her mom is like, you really seem down and out. So here's your old Christmas letters to Santa. You should read these. And so when she does, it's kind of like seeing, you know, some joy through a child's mm -hmm. eyes. And she's, you know, she decides that she's going to write a letter, um, but to herself. And um, it, I think it was a, a nice book, too, to remind you that it's also okay to enjoy Christmas through a kid's eyes. Um, it kind of brought her back to remembering Oh, this is supposed to be. I'm too. I'm too stuck in my sadness, and I need to enjoy what's around me. Um, so that was kind of nice. That's it's straight up romance, though. Um, yeah, just romance. Straight up romance, ready for Hallmark, maybe Lifetime, depending on if there's yeah. a little bit of. Well, I don't even know if there's a little bit of edge in what Lifetime's showing right now. No, I, I've uh, watched a few of those, and there's not. They they run a. They've run pretty the same course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be familiar with the story. So, Debbie McComber also wrote the Mrs. Miracle series. I don't know if you're familiar mm -hmm. with those, where she's the you know a, an angel shows up just when you need her to take care of your home or whatever. Um, I don't, I don't know. A lot of people like those books, and there's a, there is a series of movies um, for Mrs. Miracle. I've watched all of them. <laughs> so, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Again, my that's dirty a little secret. A different kind of escape. Yeah, yeah. I do. I love Christmas movies. I do love Christmas movies. Yeah. And a lot of times I'll turn the TV on Hallmark because I can walk in the room at any time and I know it, I don't have to know the story, but I can like watch five minutes and I'm like, oh, that's really sweet. And then yeah. go back to you know, whatever you're doing. my kitchen or whatever I need to do. Yeah, because you know how it's going to end. I mean, right. there's going to be a misunderstanding and then they're going to sort it all out. Exactly. And that's okay. It's not real life, but I'm, it's great. It's um, an escape. It is an escape. I wish, well, I mean, with Hallmark, I can't escape from like, what, September to December, <laughs> but basically <laughs> with Christmas. That's yes. overkill. Um, I really try to start around... Like, my, my Christmas reading started at the beginning of November because I wanted to squeeze them all in there. Right. What if I don't read fast enough? Um, well, you're doing two books, a, two books at a time. Yeah, generally speaking, I'm listening to a book and I'm reading a book in the evening because I don't listen when other people are around. Um, it's kind of rude. So, yeah, um, I just listen when I'm alone. But, um, yeah, I average two to three books a week that way, um, maybe more. But you're getting them from the library. I am. And you're you're using your free resources. I so am. It's not like you're sinking a fortune. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's it's true. So it is possible to get everything you need from your local library. Because I, I mean, they're certainly meeting my needs. If I've only bought three books this year, and I can tell you exactly which three they were. So that says a lot. That says a lot when you're reading two to three books, maybe more a week. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, so. they can keep up with my habits. Um, and that's with digital resources, too. So that's really excellent. Um, now you have a to-read pile. Oh, yes. it's that, that pile is much bigger than the ones listed here. But, you know, priorities. Um, Meet Me in London, that's the one I'm currently reading. And it is by Georgia, I want to say Tuffalo. I'm going to say Tuffalo. Um, it's about a fake engagement that starts to feel a little too real. 
Those are fun. Those are Those fun. Are always fun. Yeah, that, that's definitely a theme in in the Christmas <laughs> movies. That's type stuff too. Where oh, I need a boyfriend to go home with me at Christmas, and that's exactly this. The, the he's a busy department store owner, and he needs a fiance to make his mama happy, and this girl fits the bill. But they got some good chemistry, and I've probably read about, I can't even tell you how many pages, because you know your Kindle just tells you percentage, and I'm mm -hmm. at like 25. Um, so he's just asked her to be his fake fiance. Yeah. So you know, there's going to be some something that happens. <laughs> And his parents are going to recognize it first. Probably, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they'll be, you know, they'll hurt each other, and then they'll come back together. It'll be great. I don't even care that I know what's going to happen. Like, I've probably read it before, just under a different name. It's okay. It's okay. I love it. Um, this other, this one, Always in December by Emily Stone, I think I'll read it next. It says, and I got this straight off the blurb. Right. Um, a chance encounter during the holiday season brings two people together as quickly as it tears them apart until fate intervenes again and again, which reminds me a little bit of Eight Perfect Hours. Um, it's okay. I like all those stories. It's a good story, good characters. I like a good character. Me too. If the character's strong, I'm good. Yeah, and I think too, in some of these, um, like in Meet Me in London, they're, there's, they're dealing with some very adult issues. There's some grief um, that's playing into the need to meet his parents' approval, um, which I think a lot of people can relate to, you know. Mm -hmm. um, parental improvement, or uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Parental approval. Yes, is something we still strive for, even at my age. <laughs> so. Yes, yes, we do. Yeah, so, uh, it, it, I, I, you know, I get that. Um, and then I've got the Santa suit. It says it's a novella, which really just means it's like less than 300 pages, um, celebrating the magic of Christmas and second chances. So it's about a divorce I find in love again, I think. I'm going to go with that. That sounds good. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. I don't know. I haven't read it, but... That's Mary Kate Andrews. Um, she writes Southern fiction, so that's always... I like Southern fiction. I love Southern fiction. Yeah. If I can find something set in the South. And I think part of it is because I have moved away from here and then come home again. And when I lived away, I was always look for something by a Southern author. So it would feel familiar. It would feel familiar. I mean, you know, if you're living in the Midwest, there's a lot that's very different than Western North Carolina and Lenore. Oh, I... I traveled all over the country, all over the world in these books. I mean, the um, one of that Debbie McComber book that took place, not Debbie McComber, Sarah Morgan that took place in Finland. I'd never even heard of the town that they were in. I had to Google where it was. Um, so, you know, you get to learn a few things, too. You do get to learn a few things. Um, probably one of my biggest dislikes is when an author gets something wrong. Like, they try to get something right about a location yep. or a state. You know, particularly if they're talking about North Carolina, we North Carolinians. We know. We know. And we're like, you know, you can't take a boat from Wilmington to Chapel Hill. I was Hill. just thinking that. <laughs> That's so wrong. That is wrong. <laughs> and see, I understand what you're talking about. How did they do that? I'm like, you just can't. I'm watching, I watched that. We're talking about Outer Banks. Banks. And I'm like, no, you can't do that. But man, wouldn't it be nice if you could? <laughs> it would be nice. I mean... And that lighthouse at the end of the series, um, that's in South Carolina. That's not North Carolina. And they're two very distinct states. We are different. So, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, that's my little state boss. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm with you. No, I'm with you. Um, those are things that drive me crazy, too. And, and the thing is, is that books often become TV. And TV often becomes books. The Hallmark mm -hmm. Channel has their own, like, per, they put out books like yes. you'll read you'll watch the movie and then the next year you'll be able to buy the book they're doing it opposite but people eat it up I, and I if do. it makes people feel good yeah and if people are reading yeah that's what's important i think reading is one of the skills that people need most if you I, want to be able to communicate if you want to be able to write well yeah i agree be able to read well well and too i mean i often said, look, just let me put a book in your hand when I worked at the library. Just let me put a book in your hand that you might enjoy or might not. We'll figure out what it is you do like. Um, I mean, there's definite books I don't enjoy and then I, I don't I don't read James Patterson or Clive Cussler. Those are not for me. But over the years I have found what is. Um, and I, I like to think I read widely. Um, but at Christmas I tend to zero in on the happy. And that's okay. Yeah.
thank you for bringing us your happy Christmas, or we'll call it holiday list. And remember, some of these can be read into January. If Absolutely. You don't read at the pace Emily does, because <laughs> I don't know many people that do. Um, just pick up a book and take a little time to enjoy a book this Christmas. Yeah, please. And thank you for watching Caldwell County Today.